without further ado, I want to welcome Brother Terry Robinson. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, as you all can see, and if you don't know, I am not Pastor Ron. Uh, the difference between him and I is that he's a little bit more handsome than I am. Amen. So that's how you can distinguish uh, him from me. Amen. Amen. But I know you think was thinking something else. Amen. <laughs> but that's OK. That's OK. That is OK. Correct. Amen. But, but we're getting there. <laughs> Amen. Listen, before we get started, I just want to say this. One of the things that the Lord said to me uh, throughout the last few days, and this is not part of my sermon. This is a side note. <clears throat> he said to me that beware of the little foxes that spoil the vine. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because we have a word becoming fruitful and free in, two, in 2023. The devil is out to spoil and destroy your dreams and everything that you have there. What he wants to do is he's going to send the little foxes out to try to destroy our faith and cause us to have uh, disbelief and all of these things like this. And you have to understand one thing about the uh, little foxes. They couldn't they wasn't like the bigger foxes. They couldn't get over into the vine vineyard, uh, the vineyard there. But what they could do is they would dig a hole and go under and try to and try to spoil the vine by eating the vine and causing the vine to drop so that they could eat the grapes also, too, because you had to you had to understand what they did. They had uh, thorns all around with, with rocks and stones and bricks as a barrier to keep the foxes out. But keep in mind, the little foxes can dig under. And what the little foxes is going to try to do is to dig into your faith. Dig into your dream Dig into everything you have But God said don't worry about it He's going to put a barrier around everything When they can't dig in Because he's going to encamp his angels All about us amen So what he just told me to, to tell you Just to beware Of the little foxes amen So don't be surprised if little things start happening Here and there in your life And things like this right here It's the little foxes but remember, God got you. Amen? amen. Amen. That was a side note. Amen. That was free. That was free. Amen. <laughs> amen. Uh, before I get started also, too, I just want to I've always been taught throughout my years of preaching and things like this. I always give honor to people. So I want to give honor first to Pastor Ron and Pastor Denise. Amen. And I also want to give honor to my wife and my son that's here today. I, and. And I also want to give um, honor to the leadership, all the leadership in this church, amen. From Pastor Ron, Pastor Nice, all the way to the um, executive team and everybody, amen. All the leaders. I thank God for you all. And John, I thank you for what you did this morning. And even the songs that the worship team was doing, it all lines up with what God gave me today to preach on, amen. To talk about on because see God is getting ready to take us somewhere and that somewhere is a place in the supernatural and that's why the devil don't want us to have this amen but but we want to tell him that it's a that he's going to be a 844 in other words he's a father of, of a lie of liars he's a lie and he nothing that he can do amen nothing only only way he can do it if we allow him don't entertain Anything that he's going to do now the reason that I tell you don't entertain it because I can tell you uh, For sure if you entertain those things, he's going to get in I remember uh, Years ago, I think in 2003 I too had an open-heart surgery and after I had the open-heart surgery The doctor told me said when you go home, he said you, you say you may experience depression and I and I looked at him I said no not saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, baptized and running on for Jesus. No, no, that's not going to happen to me. I'm not going to go through that. But after my mom left, when she, she was alive then, and, and after my wife went back to work, and my son, he was much younger, he went back to school. It's like the devil knocked on the door. Hey, Terry, I'm here. God don't love you. He don't care anything about you. 
Now, keep in mind, just about maybe a few weeks before that, I was at a church and they wanted me just to, to, to talk about healing, preach on healing. And everybody was getting blessed. And then all of a sudden, the devil said, remember, you was doing all that preaching about healing. And look at you right now. I went into the deepest, darkest hole because I entertained that. It was so deep, I didn't want to come out. So the devil said, what you need to do is go out in the garage, turn the car on, and kill yourself. But that moment, a friend called me. He said, Terry, you know what? I didn't call you to, to give you any scripture because I know you know the scriptures. He said, what I call for, I want to cry with you. I want to cry with you. So we cried. And we talked, and all of a sudden, I shook that fox off. And after when I came out of that hole, it was like, see, I like watched the movie. It was like the Holy Spirit was standing on top, and he began to throw a rope down and lasso it down. He pulled me up out of that place. And ever since then, the devil has been in trouble. Amen. Somebody say, devil's in trouble. Amen. Amen. I don't know how I went there, but I had to go there. Amen. Uh, one of the things is that's, that's going on right now is that everything that we was doing today is lining up with what God has given me to preach to you. But let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and we praise you and we magnify your holy name, dear God. Now, God, your good and your mercy endure forever. Now, Father, I ask that you. I ask that you hide me behind your bloodstained banner that nobody see Terry Robinson, but see the you that's in me and that you be revealed in this place. I pray right now, Holy Spirit, that I would decrease and that you would increase within me. Give me the words to utter out of my lips that you want me to say and not what I want to say. Now, Father, I thank you in advance for what you're going to do in this place. Amen. So, my scriptures this morning will be coming from Psalms 22, 1 through 3. And by the way, if you have a handout, it's, it's not as accurate as what I'm going through now because the Holy Spirit decided to change everything on me, amen. He went a different direction um, with me. So, I just want you to know that because he told me, he said, yeah, he said, what, you, what you've been working on, what you've been doing was you. But now, I want to do it, amen. So, I like to be led by the Holy Spirit, amen. So, Psalm 22, 1 through 3, and then also we're going to go to uh, Hebrew 13 and 15. Now, the word, of the, the word of our Lord reads on Psalm 22, 1 through 3. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me and from the words of my roaring? My God, I cry in the daytime, but thou hearest not. In the night season, I am not silent. But there are holy, O thou inhabit the praises of Israel. Hebrew 13 and 15. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually, that is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. So I want to use for our subject today, when God inhabits a, sacri a sacrifice of praise when God inhabits a sacrifice of praise. Have you ever felt like David where you have been praying and you've been seeking God and you just you just need some answers from God? You need God to rescue you out of the place that you are in and you don't understand why God allowed you to go into that place. But yet and still, we're like David. We begin to just cry out to God, cry out to God. God, when are you going to heal me? God, when are you going to make a change in my finances? God, when are you going to come in so I can experience your glory, your power, and your anointing? But God just say, hold on. And what David did, David kind of shook this thing off. But he said, but God inhabits the praises of Israel, or of, of his people. And what, what he was saying was, he said, wait a minute, wait a minute. He said, he, he said to himself, he said, David, David, you know what to do. 
Get yourself out of that place that the devil has put you in and you just begin to praise him. You just begin to magnify his holy name. You just begin to tell God how wonderful he is, how magnificent he is. And David knew that every time he praised God, something happened. The heavens began to open up and David began to shout and dance before the Lord. Somebody say amen. Amen. So, so just allow me to share a few words with you about when God inhabits a praise, amen, a sacrifice of praise. There's just something powerful about a sacrifice of praise. Uh, uh, you know, even when I was in that moment in my life, uh, uh, I, I just remember another time when they, the doctors called me back in, I think, about 1998 or somewhere like that. That He said that, that you know, well, you need, we need, you need to come in and talk to us because we think you have prostate cancer. And when he said that, when he said that, um, I said, wait a minute, what? I said, no, no. So I began to give God my resume. God, I've been preaching for you. I've been tired I've been teaching. I've been going to go wherever you want me to go. I go. Now, God, why are you going to allow this to happen to me? Why? I couldn't understand it all. So as I was driving, I went by this Cadillac dealership and the Holy Spirit said to me, just as plain, he said, he said to me, he said, if you bought a brand new car and you drove it off the lot and it broke down, what would you do? You know, by that time, you know, uh, my te I was tearing up and my nose was running and everything because I couldn't understand it all. And, and, and at that moment, I said to the Holy Spirit, I would take it back to the dealership. He said, now you need to go back to God because he fearfully and wonderfully made you. Amen. So he said, all you got to do for three days, just praise him. Just praise him. Well, at that time, I was kind of upset with God. I couldn't understand what was going on. And I, I went home and I just I just sit there and, 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 and the Holy Spirit said, listen, listen, Terry, you got to praise him. He said, what you do is if you can say holla, I'll help you with Luya. <laughs> Woo, I feel that thing again. For some reason, when I when I just when I uh, uh, holla, all I know, he kicked me over into a Luya and it was on again. Amen. <laughs> It was on again. And three days later, I got a phone call. That he said, Terry, well, it was just a mistake. Everything's good. But I learned something. I learned something through the power of praise. Amen. When you can't get anything out and you need to praise him, you just need to ask the Holy Spirit to to help you. Amen. So, 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 so here we go. What does it mean? When God inhabits a sacrifice of praise. Well, let me just let me just share a, 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 a few definitions from the um, Strong's Concordance that I got. And the Holy Spirit, he added to that. Amen. In the word inhabit means to take a seat. You see, the thing is that we were created to praise and worship God. He created us that way. Isaiah 43 and 21 says it. This people have I formed for myself. They shall show forth my praise. Therefore, God will not resist our praise. So as soon as God hear us, we lift up his name. He begins to sit down in our praise. He sits down in our praise. But here's what he do. Here's what he do. Here's what he do. Here's what he do. When, we, when he sit down in our praise, the other word that strong definition said that <laughs> inhabit means to ambush in quietness. So while he's seated there and you praising him, God walks in, he stands up and he ambush your praise. <laughs> Quietly, he comes in. Still, he comes in. Everything is very still and quiet when he comes in. He just ambush your praise. Amen. Somebody say ambush. ambush. And then he say to to dwell is to remain in. So all of a sudden 
your praise with God gets so good. God, who is sitting and he gets up and he stands up and he began to just dwell and walk around in that praise. Mm. He walks around, he walks around, he walks around. And by this time, God is feeling good, too, because you are lifting up his holy name. But then it goes on to say this. It goes on to say this. The word inhabit means to marry. Marry. Now, by this time, God walking around, he said, mm, this praise is so good. I think I'll put a ring on it. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah. I think I put a ring on this praise because this is real good. And all of a sudden he said well, uh, uh, to the angel, why are you all sitting there? Get up and give some praise right now too. And he looks up into heaven to everybody in heaven. Come on, y'all in unison. Y'all come on and begin to start praising God with him, amen, because this is a praise, come, this is a sacrifice of praise that's coming from him right now that nobody else can understand but me. And that's why I say I love it, I love it, and I got to put this ring on it, amen. Amen. Oh. <laughs> Just, 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 just tell your neighbor, God will put a ring on your praise. <laughs> mm, hallelujah. You see, you see, here's the thing. Here's the thing. One of the things that God require when you in a sacrifice of praise and he put that ring on it. You know, it says in Matthew uh, 22 and 37, Jesus said, Unto him, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all of your soul, heart, and mind. God loves when we love him with everything within us, in spite of what we are going through. If, if I'm broke, busted, and disgusted, and can't be trusted by nobody, mm, that's the time to give him a praise, amen? That's the time to give him praise. If I can't pay my phone bill, if I can't pay my notes on my house, if I can't pay my car payment, I'm still going to worship him until they call, till the bank call and tell me, say, your house been paid off. Yeah. Woo. That's going to happen to somebody in here. Oh, And then when God began to put that ring on that praise, it goes, it goes in Zephaniah 3 and 17. The Lord that God is in the midst of the mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. So when God gets ready to, to, to exchange vows with your praise, he begins to sing a love song over your praise. Amen. Mm. <laughs> and when God sings a love praise, everything, everything that has breath has to praise ye the Lord. Amen. Everything has to praise him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, 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 am I making sense today? Amen. Sacrifice of praise is praising God in hard times. Again, it's praising God when you don't see nothing, when you have a death of a loved one. I mean, it just goes on and on. Just last year, uh, we had two people in our family that passed away. And the only thing that God, I said, God, why did <laughs> my, my, especially my cousin, I said, he was, he was, you know, he was only, well, he was about maybe 67, 68, but still yet, I just couldn't believe that God would take him this early. So his wife called me and she was crying and she was at the hospital. She said, he's made his transition. I said, okay, the only thing I can tell you right now, let's just praise God. Let's just lift up his name. And, and, she, and she couldn't understand. I said, the reason that we got to praise him, no, God, we were believing God was going to heal him. But, but, but still, I said, listen, let's praise him because he's in God's arms right now. And I said, when he passed away, I mean, what did he say and how did it look? She said, Terry, he was so peaceful. He was so peaceful. I said, now he wants you to have peace. Amen. 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 John 16 and 33, it says this. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Mm. Hallelujah. Now, now. Tribulation means this. Here come these little foxes. Amen. These little foxes bring pressure. 
They bring affliction. They bring anguish. They bring burdens. They bring persecution. They bring trouble. They bring oppression. And they bring stress. Amen. So a sacrifice of praise is giving God praise and honor, even though the little foxes are trying to dig into your life. You still got to give him praise because you say, foxes, little foxes, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a praise on this thing. Because when we put a praise on that, they, they begin to flee. The devil cannot stand when, he, when we begin to praise and magnify God's name. He can't stand it. It hurts his ears. He would tell the foxes, he said, retreat, retreat, retreat. Because they praising, they're going crazy over there. They're praising and lifting up his holy name. They're telling him how good he is. And we're still digging into his life and trying to make to bring havoc in his life. And they still praising and magnifying God. The devil got to go, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But Jesus said this. He said, be of good cheer. And good cheer means to be filled with joy. When you give God a praise of hallelujah from all that's within you, that is when he fills you with unspeakable joy. Amen. Unspeakable joy. I remember back in back in uh, 1989, uh, I was living in this little beautiful city in, in Nuremberg, Germany. And, and, and there that one night, a, a couple of days before that, a friend of mine gave me a gospel tape. Um, he told me, he said, I want you to listen to this music. It's going to change your life. Well, I did. I didn't want anybody to know that I was listening to the music and had my headphones on. Uh, the last thing I remember, I just remember the, the guy that was singing was saying, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Now, I wasn't saved or anything. I was drinking and I was running the streets in Germany. I was doing my thing and everything. But all of a sudden. When, when, when something God came into my life, he not only saved me that night, he filled me with the Holy Ghost and I began to speak in tongues and he gave me so much joy. He gave me that unspeakable joy that I had and, and I just began to praise him. And again, I, I didn't know what was going on, but all I know I could do was just praise him because he gave me unspeakable joy. And that time it wasn't the money or anything that I needed, but I needed joy in my life. Amen. But he gave me more than enough of joy. He gave me unspeakable joy. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody say unspeakable joy. Unspeakable. Nehemiah 8 and 10 said, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. For the joy of the Lord. And he knew that night that I needed strength. Amen. I needed strength to go on every day. Amen. Because during that time, the reason that I was there, because I was I was in the military. And, and, you know, it's, it's a hard life sometimes when you're in the military and things that's going on and, you know, stuff like this right here. But but he gave me strength to carry on. Psalm 16 and 11 said in that presence is the fullness of joy at that right hands are pleasures forever. Amen. And the pleasures that he gave me was his peace, his joy, his anointing, his power to keep going. Amen. Then Jesus said, I have overcome the world. So Jesus sacrifice on the cross gave us victory. And when he gave us that victory, he said, now you are more than a conqueror. More than a conqueror. Amen. So I began to start that, that night. Nobody told me anything about the Lord. Because I, like I said, I remember even when the people, people was going to church on a Sunday, I used to stand out on, on my balcony and have my, have my German beer, drinking my beer. And say, here's to you all going to church. Have a great time. <laughs> but you know what happened that same night? He took all, told me, he took all of my beer and I had to pour it down the commode. He said, you finished with it. And I was smoking Newport cigarettes, amen. He said, take your cigarettes and flush them down to come up. And I didn't never have a taste for a beer nor a cigarette from that day. Only thing I had for a taste is, oh, taste and see how God is, amen. That's what I began to taste, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But here's what he said. Praise. When we become more than a conqueror, he said, I want you to praise me. Psalms. 145 and 21 says, my mouth shall speak praise of the Lord and let all the flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. You know, 
and praising God. I don't care where I am. I, I don't I don't do it. You know, I don't just get into the stores and everything and just just begin to start praising God out loud. I would just walk around and just begin to praise God and thank him. And and I began to I began to touch the hamburger meat and the, and, and the pork chops and 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 and, 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 the, and the green beans and everything like that and all this stuff. Because I because I, I know that some woman is coming in there and say, Lord, I'm praying that my husband will be saved. And filled with the Holy Ghost She take that hamburger home and, and I just believe that she made some hamburgers for him And he, and he began to start Baby what you put in this thing this, this is good This is good This is good This is good Because he had got saved Sanctified And filled with the Holy Ghost And he was baptized And running on for Jesus Amen so, so, so I, I just believe that, 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 and if he came into the store somewhere between the green beans and the jello, he got saved, amen. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah, hallelujah. I don't want y'all to think I'm crazy now, but I just feel my anointing on me right now, amen. Hallelujah. You know, that's why I said all that to say this. When we begin to praise God, it shifts this. The atmosphere wherever you are It began to shift amen Now as I was walking around Market basket amen praising God There was this gentleman That came up Behind me And he was whistling amen And it was getting louder and louder Now keep, keep in mind I was praising God And I turned around and God is my witness This is a true story amen I turned around and I said Sir what are, what are you whistling there He said I don't know I just had this I'm just wondering what a friend we have in Jesus. Amen. What a friend. And you know why? Because as, you, as I begin to start praising God in market basket, it began the atmosphere start shifting. Amen. And, 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 and I believe I believe that, that everything I believe that the roaches and the flies and everything got saved that day too. Amen. <laughs> everything there had to get saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. I believe that with all of my heart. I'm just that crazy to think that way at times. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. You see. Praise invites God's presence into our situation and turns our impossibilities into possibilities. Amen. Praise takes our focus off of our, ourself and puts it back on God. And you know, praise would defeat the devil. It would defeat all his principalities. It would uh, defeat all his rules of darkness and spiritual wickedness in high places. It would defeat them because again, now I was told that Satan was once the leader of the praise and worship team in heaven. I don't know that, amen. But that's just what I hear a lot of people say. But if he was, he know how God enjoy praise and worship and he can't stand it, amen. Hallelujah. See, sometimes we got to go through the day. We just have to go through the day when we begin to start praising God. Just say, Lord, I praise you. I praise you for your mercy. Our Lord, I praise you for forgiving me of all of my sin. I praise you, Lord, for your protection uh, over me and my family and my friends. I praise you today, Lord, because of your guidance in my life. I praise you today, Lord, because of your friendship that I have with you. I, I used to be an enemy uh, 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 with you, but now we are friends right now. Amen. I praise you for your unfailing love. Amen. I praise you, dear God, for being my savior. I praise you for bringing me out of darkness into the marvelous light. And by that time, when you get through with all of that throughout the day, begin to praise him. Things are just begin to start shifting in your life. Amen. Things are just shifting. No matter where you go, you carry that atmosphere of praise and worship on you. You carry that atmosphere of who God is, amen, because he's on you, in you, and all around you, amen. I believe in the power of praise and worship. I can't sing. I wish God, I believe that when, 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 when God was passing out singing abilities, he passed right on by me. And, did, and, and see, I know that I sing so bad when I'm taking a shower, the water cuts off. <laughs> Amen. I know that's bad. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. But here are some powerful examples. I'm going to give you some powerful examples of, of God. 
in having the praise. You remember when, when Jehoshaphat got all the people together and all the enemy was coming against them? He got he began to he, he began to just bring them all together. He said, what we're going to do is, is, is just begin to just praise him. We're going to go out and praise him. Uh, Jehoshaphat got them all together. He said, ladies, you all sing tenor. Uh, me and you sing bass. And, and, and I want you children. I just want you to follow along with everybody else. Amen. And they went out singing. They say that the enemy they, in the Bible, they say that the enemy began to destroy themselves. And they picked up the spoil of everything they had out there just because they began to praise and worship God. God and you know if God he's the same God yesterday today and forever if he did it for Jehoshaphat and all the people did he can do it for us now amen and hallelujah hallelujah and, 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 and remember when Paul and Silas was in jail amen they began to praise and worship God when they began to start praising and worship God I mean the earth shook because the power of the Holy Spirit came into that place I don't know what songs they were singing or what hymns they were singing but whatever it was, it was good to God. And God got up and said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I already put a ring on it but once before, but I got to put a ring on this thing again because I'm getting ready to shake the foundation of this place. And everybody got free, amen. And then the, and, and the jealous asked, what must I do to be saved, amen? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The power of praise can cause you to begin to trust God. Remember, remember when Zephaniah them was in a bad place. There was a drought. They, the, uh, uh, all the food dried up. The cows died. Everything died. No, no, no rain. No, nothing was going on. And they had anything. Everything was barren. But, 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 but here's what here's what um, he said. He said, "Listen." He said this. He said, "Yet." Will I rejoice in the Lord? Yet will I rejoice in the Lord. So sometimes you got to look around and say, no matter what is going on in my life, yet will I praise him. Yet will I give him glory. Yet will I magnify his holy name. I will lift him up because he's my God. I don't care. But what, what he did was he said that he looked toward the mountain and, and, and seen all the ghosts leaping up over the mountain. And all of a sudden he began to understand that that's the same way God is in my spirit. I can leap over all over these problems. Amen. I'm going to leap over everything I'm going to get into that high place in God amen and that high place in God and I'm going to continue to praise him no matter what amen hallelujah hallelujah somebody ought to shout amen in this place amen now I'm coming to the end but here's what I got to do you know one thing that I learned years ago being in the army, I was an army instructor of field artillery for several years. And every time I instructed, we always had a practical exercise at the end of it. So I want you to stand with me because we need to just come on, give God some glory in this place. Come on, come on. Don't be ashamed to open up your mouth. Just begin to thank him right now. I only hear just a couple of people. Come on, let's give God a clap offering in this place right now. Let's give him a clap offering in this place. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. I magnify your holy name. You're worthy to be praised. You're you're worthy to be magnified. God, you're great. You're a magnificent God. There's no other God like you, dear God. I thank you, dear God, for the blood of Jesus. I thank you, Jesus, for sacrificing your life for me. I thank you for your Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. I was going to offer a prayer, but God just told me he just inhabit your praises. Amen. And whatever was on your heart, God has taken care of that. Amen. Amen. At this time, I think we're going to have offering. We usually have a uh, video and then we will have our offering. Amen. Amen. As we transition to the next part of our service and prepare to receive tithes and offerings, we want you to be aware of a few things. 
If you're here in the sanctuary and need an offering envelope, raise your hand right now and the ushers will bring one over to you. Here are the other ways that you can give to help fuel the mission here at Christian Life Church. You can give on the app by going to the More tab and then select Give. Or you can give on our website at citlchurches.org slash donation. You can also give by texting Give CLC to 188-364-GIVE. That is 4483. You can also send a check by mail to the address on the screen. Thank you for making a difference with your generous gifts to the Lord. Church. My name is Scott Ferrer and I'm the Missions Director here at Christian Life Church. I just want to spend a few moments letting you know of this month's mission initiative. We'll be partnering with Alejandro Arias of International Ministries. Since 1999, Alejandro Arias has been preaching the gospel with signs and wonders, following two nations across the world. This month, we are partnering with his work in the ministries to be able to send him on his next upcoming trips. Here's some recent footage from a crusade he preached at in Ethiopia. Let's take a look. Hello, City Life Church. Blessings to you. Regards to Pastor Ron and Denise. We love you guys. We thank you for your support. We are so appreciative for you standing with us and helping us reach the loss all over the world. Quickly, I just want to tell you what the Lord is doing in 2023. I don't have much time, but I just want to share with you what God is about to do. In the month of February, we're going to South Africa for the first time in the history of our ministry. We'll be doing meetings in Cape Town. Johannesburg and Durban. In the month of March, we're going to the UK and we're going to be part of the reopening the ancient well strategy where we will be praying and speaking at different conferences and uh, we are believing God for revival, for the ancient well of revival in the UK to reopen. And we are also going to Venezuela where we will be part of an amazing crusade, 20,000 people that's what we're expecting and believing for in the city of Apure in Venezuela. This is going to be historic because we haven't been to Venezuela in a long, long time. It's been like almost 18 years. And then we're going to uh, Colombia in the month of May and we will be taking on a city and also saturating a whole nation with a bunch of evangelists that are coming from everywhere. 21 evangelists taking 21 cities with the gospel. The times are short. We need to make a difference and let's do it now. Together, we can reach the world for Jesus. So I want to ask you to please pray, consider in your giving and your in your prayers this month of February, our ministry. We love you all. Thank you. Thank you, Alejandro, for all the amazing work you're doing on the missions field. The Bible says that when we financially give into these types of ministries, it is added to our heavenly account. Thank you for giving towards this awesome work that Alejandro is doing. So if you'd like to give above your normal offerings, you can do so as you normally tithe. You can go to our church website, which is citlchurches.org. You can go to the church app and go under donations. Or if you're in the church sanctuary, you can grab one of those white envelopes and write in Alejandro Arias, and we'll make sure he gets those offerings. We thank you so much for partnering with us every single month and making such an impact on the missions field. Now, if you haven't done so already, you can go to your Facebook or Instagram and add in this month's hashtag, which is hashtag Alejandro Arias, and I'll be on your screen. Thank you so much and have a blessed day. Amen. Amen. Wow, what a great word today. Thank you, Pastor Terry. It's such a blessing and an honor. Anytime you speak, we appreciate your, your uh, faithfulness. Amen. Amen. Well, in the words of Pastor Terry, what time is it? It's time to give. Amen. Amen. Well, I want to speak to you today uh, regarding 2 Corinthians 9, 
verse 7. It says, each of you should give what you've decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Amen? Amen. Lines right up with Pastor Terry's word this morning. Amen. About making that sacrifice in your finances to give unto the Lord and to praise and worship him when you are doing it. The other, uh, I don't know, I guess it was a couple of weeks ago, we had our son Christopher gave us a call and he was talking about some of his uh, classes that he's taking in college and he was so excited you could hear the joy and the excitement in his voice and it just gave uh, Steve and I such joy to hear how excited he was and how um, you know he's like you know these classes are really hard and there's a lot to it he said but I just love learning he said I've decided I really do love learning I used to tell him all the time you're just one of those kids you just love to learn there's nothing wrong with that he'd be like I do not I'm like yes you do and but it just gave us Steve and I was so good when we hung up the phone we're like wow we saw Sounds so awesome. He's doing so good. And do you know that when you cheerfully give to God, that's exactly what he says. Wow, look at my kids. They get it. They understand uh, part of my kingdom principles. Amen. He says they love me and they love to give to me. They understand that when they give to me and they do it with a cheerful heart, that I open the floodgates of heaven. Amen. And I pour a blessing upon them that they can't contain. And God, I just feel like when he looks upon us, he's like, that's my kid who loves me, who loves to sacrifice for me, that knows and understands who I am. Amen. There's nothing like a cheerful giver. And I think in today's society, I know for Steve and I, you know, we just automatically give. Our bank account just automatically every week, it just goes in. And sometimes when that happens, you can forget to be that cheerful giver because it's just, you know, our heart is to cheerfully give unto the Lord, but you can forget to give that cheerfulness. So this morning, it's a little different, but I love how it lines up with Pastor Terry's word today. As uh, the ushers come forward, let's all stand together. And as you give, whether you give in your offerings uh, and you don't physically write your check, or maybe you're at a place where you think, I don't know if I can give. God says that if you will test him in this, that he will prove himself. So what I'd like to have happen is whether you're putting something in the bucket today or not, I'm going to ask you each and every person to pass it along like they used to do in the old days, right? Pass it along. And as we're doing it, I want all of us all together until we're all the way to the last person to cheerfully give, to give God thanks for who he is, for what he does, how he's blessing. We've, you know, Renna mentioned about um, Asbury College and what's going on there. You know, they started with, uh, they had their message of repentance. They uh, started with praise and worship and then they didn't let it stop. They didn't let the praise and worship stop and that's how it started there and praise the Lord but if God can do it there yes. he can do it here amen so let's give yes he does so let's all of us all at the same time as the buckets going by let's praise let's worship let's thank God for who he is amen Heavenly Father we just exalt you today you are so good thank you for the opportunity to give into your kingdom Lord God Father we thank you Lord God that not only does it bless those of us here but Lord God it goes out forward to the highways and the byways Lord we give to you Father for because we have a reverent fear of you Lord God because you are good because you are so deserving Lord God because you yourself are a giver so Lord it is a joy it is a blessing to give to you Father we say take Take what we have and make it yours, Lord God, because it's yours anyway. So, Father, today we say you are blessed. You are blessed. You are blessed. You are holy and you are wonderful. And you are a great God. And, Father, we cheerfully give to you our sacrifice. Father, we thank you that you have given us the ability to make wealth. And we give it back to you, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. We bless your name. Amen. 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 Well done. You may be seated. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God.
Well, we got a couple quick announcements for you before you head out the door or you head out those doors to fellowship with one another. And uh, our first one is for the volunteers. If you weren't here last week and we honored you and we have a gift for you, uh, we do have some that have been unclaimed. So please make sure to go to the volunteer table outside and pick up your gift from the church and your note of thanks. Uh, we really want you to have that. And um, also, we still, I think we sent out a a couple notes about this, but we have a lost car key. And so if you lost a vehicle key, it's like a, a fob. Um, we found that, I think it was during first service, but um, anyway, we ha we still have your key. So I'm not sure how you got home, but uh, anyway, if you found out that, <laughs> whoops, my wife's car key is missing or my husband's car key is missing, don't be that spouse that says, honey, you're always losing stuff. Just go get it. You know, just go pick it up. Help them save face. All right. And um, another announcement that we have is we have our 40 day fast that's coming up starting on Wednesday, the 22nd. That's this Wednesday. So I hope you all have been thinking about, you know, what you're going to fast, how you're going to engage in this. Um, I know that, you know, we all have different ways that we can fast or that the Lord is leading us to fast. There's never going to be any condemnation or any dictation from this pulpit on what you should do. It's just a humble request. Please engage because when we do something in unity, there is power in unity. There's a very amazing powers. I believe it's Psalm 133 that says that it, the anointing that comes in unity is like the oil that goes from at the top of Aaron's head down his beard into his priestly garments. And we are the body of Christ. And when we do things all together, there is amazing anointing. So we want to see the glory of God. We want to see breakthroughs in our church. There are some people who are believing for some really major things. You might be one of them. And you're going to need your brothers and sisters to, like we saw with these men up front, lock arms. We are so much more impenetrable when we lock arms. So let's do that. Let's all get engaged in the fast in whatever way the Lord is leading you. And so that starts this uh, February 22nd. Um, and also, I know that there had been a book. I'm not sure if we still have it in the bookstore, but it was a book that Pastor Ron found. It's a 40-day devotion guide uh, that's really great. If we, you want to purchase that, I believe the church had some for $10. Again, I'm completely off notes here, so we might not even have any more of them. We do. Well, there we go. Praise the Lord. Um, so we have those, and it's incredible, uh, written by a, a woman who's just had an amazing ministry and walk with the Lord in that area. All right. Lastly, I think lastly, make sure, no, not lastly, uh, we have family game night coming up February 24th here, 630 to 830. If you want more information, you can look on the apps, but if you're going to come, bring a game and a dish to share full family. So you can bring your kids, bring them all. Um, baby dedication on March 5th, <laughs> um, 11 a.m. And that's going to be at the end of second service. So if you want your baby or your child dedicated, let the office know. And so they can be prepared for that. And downpour is Friday, March 10th. When? There you go. From seven to nine here. And um, we are going to do the, we are going to use the baptismals. There is going to be immersion offered. So remember to bring a towel and a change of clothes. And if you're bringing somebody, a guest with you, um, maybe give them a little prep and let them understand what the Holy Spirit is doing. So they might want to come prepared. But if they don't come prepared and they change their mind, we will still have clothes and, th and t extra towels for people to change into. Okay. That's it for announcements. We are going to sign off, and we just thank all of you who have tuned in online. Uh, you put it in the chat where you're looking, for, where you're viewing us from, because we would really like to know who's watching and where. And we just bless you in the name of Jesus, and we declare that the praises of God will be constantly in your mouth. Amen. Hi everybody, thanks for tuning into Church Online today. You can catch the playback of this entire broadcast later today on Facebook or YouTube. Or if you want to download the entire message, then on Tuesday you can get it on our church app found as Christian Life Church Maine in your app store. 
Our church app also holds so much more information, so take some time to look through the many tabs. I especially want to encourage you to search out the event tab, learn about our upcoming events, and the Get Connected Groups or GC Groups tab to get in a small group. If you have a prayer request, if you want someone to reach out to you, if you need information, then send us an email at info at citlchurches.com. God has been moving in some amazing ways during the service here at CLC. And we hope that you would consider joining us again soon in person. We've recently purchased Volara air purifiers that kill 99% of airborne SARS-CoV-2 virus because we want you to have your mind at ease while attending service. In closing, I'd like to share a verse as my prayer for you. Psalm 121, 7 through 8. May the Lord keep you from every form of evil or calamity as he continually watches over you and that you will be guarded by God himself in your coming and going throughout your week. Amen. See you next week.